This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, coming soon to a store near you, over-the-counter hearing aids. I'm not going to say that it's not going to be really confusing for consumers, but I really do think that it is positive. How hearing aids are getting a shakeup when Radio Health Journal returns. I'm Reed Pence, the producer and host of Radio Health Journal. If you like listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. My first symptom was that I smelled like burning smoke, like the house is on fire for, I think, a whole week straight, nonstop, 24-7. Understanding the fifth sense smell then in some cases some of these kids unfortunately are living pretty difficult lives so we see it as a very simple thing as a way to just kind of take care of them through food meet one chef who's trying to change up the school lunch landscape i'm marty peterson and i'm gary price these stories in depth this week on your public affairs magazine viewpoints Listen to Radio Health Journal and Viewpoints on your favorite radio station. And subscribe and listen anytime on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Health Journal. Many people discount hearing loss as a major problem. Yet, about 15% of American adults have some trouble hearing. By the time they're age 65, about a quarter of people have disabling hearing loss, and it can contribute to a whole host of other health problems, according to Barbara Kelly, Executive Director of the Hearing Loss Association of America. Hearing loss, especially untreated hearing loss, is linked to increased falls. And falls are the number one thing that sends older people to the emergency room. It's increased isolation because when it becomes hard to communicate, people pull themselves away from social situations, from family situations. It's much easier, less exhausting, easier to stay at home than go out and try to fight to hear and walk into a room where you can't hear. It's also when you have isolation that leads to depression or anxiety. And now there's research being done with the cognitive link between untreated hearing loss and cognitive decline. Despite that, most people who have a significant hearing loss don't do anything about it, even when they're well aware they have a problem. When people find out they have a hearing loss to the time they do something about it, believe it or not, it's five to 10 years. And that is a really long time to have communication breakdowns. And people can start noticing that they have a hearing loss, for example, if they're having trouble hearing on the phone or if they're turning the volume up on the TV or the radio or their families are complaining that they're doing that or having trouble with background noise or, you know, when people start to say, hey, you're mumbling, it's often the other people aren't mumbling, they're having trouble hearing. The failure to get needed hearing aids has long been the basis for insensitive comedy routines and cartoons. But why are people so resistant in real life? Sometimes it's stigma. People think that having hearing loss means you're getting old and they don't want to wear hearing aids. And physicians really don't help that because I've had so many anecdotal stories where people go to their general physician and they say, you know, I'm having trouble hearing. And if they're over 50, the physician will say, oh, don't worry about it. There's nothing you can do. It's just part of aging. So that doesn't help the situation right there. Access to care is another hurdle. Getting a hearing aid isn't easy. They're considered medical devices, so you can get one only through an audiologist or a hearing aid specialist. You need to get your hearing tested and get a prescription, and a lot of the time insurance doesn't cover any of it. People have the impression that hearing aids cost a lot of money. And while there are many price points, there are certainly hearing aids that cost up in the five and six thousands because they have artificial intelligence and they can measure your blood pressure and when you fall. There's also hearing aids that are very good that have Bluetooth streaming, rechargeable batteries, telecoils for a pair for $13.99. But people often don't realize that 
the cost of a hearing aid is about a third of the device and the services are bundled into that. So even if somebody has a need for a hearing aid and go for the lower cost one, sometimes it could be out of their budget, especially if they have a young family and Medicare does not cover the cost of hearing aids. So sometimes the cost could be not reachable for a senior. That's why Kelly is excited that the FDA has started the wheels rolling for a new category of hearing aid that could be in stores within a year or so. They'll be from mild to moderate hearing loss, and you'll be able to get them over the counter yourself without seeing an audiologist. Over the counter hearing aids will be self fitted. A person will also have to determine do they have a mild to moderate hearing loss? And there will be no help of a professional in this process. They will go to a store, they will be over the counter products on the shelves. You know, they might be in your pharmacies, they might be in big box stores, and there will not be a help of a professional. So they will be 100% self fitting. Now, a hearing healthcare professional could carry some over the counter devices and they could help people with these devices for a fee, of course, but mainly they will be over-the-counter self-fitting. The new over-the-counter hearing aids won't be customized the way they are now, but they'll still likely pack a lot of technological punch. Even so, Kelly admits some consumers may completely mess up their purchase and get a device that's completely wrong for them. This is all new. I'm not going to say that it's not going to be really confusing for consumers, or I'm not going to say it could start out as the Wild West, but I really do think that it is positive. There will be some very good products on the market, and we're going to have to do a lot of consumer education. Now, a person could buy the wrong thing, but this is where that I want the FDA to make sure that there are return policies and that people have recourse, and that people have education to know that if this over-the-counter product doesn't work, maybe you should find the help of a hearing healthcare professional. The new category of hearing aids is a continuation of the trend giving patients more involvement in their own care. It greatly lessens the cost objection, keeping so many people from getting needed hearing aids. So Kelly says even if some people start off on the wrong foot, at least they'll be getting started. We know that 80% of people who could benefit from a hearing aid don't get one for whatever reason or another. And this could, first of all, make hearing healthcare more mainstream, more easily accessible. Instead of talking thousands of dollars, we're talking hundreds of dollars. And my hope is that people who wouldn't normally take that step will take that first step into good hearing healthcare. So I am very excited about it, but I do think it's going to be a bit confusing. The FDA should wrap up the process of collecting comments on the plan in the next month or two, then formulate details. New devices could hit the shelves by the end of next year. But Kelly says people shouldn't wait if they know they've got a hearing loss. They're likely already missing far more than they know. You can find out more about all our guests through links on our website, radiohealthjournal.org. Our production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Nancy Benson. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. We're seeing women in particular, but all parents who are unable to go back into the workforce because they cannot find childcare for their kids. How the collapse of preschool staffing is undermining the economy. Then advances in wound care that eliminate scarring. We truly regenerate the wound with no scar at all. All that and more on Radio Health Journal. And that's Radio Health Journal for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more. And check Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify for a library of past programs. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and information about our guests at RadioHealthJournal.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal.